Ladies and gentlemen, no matter how strange things get here, they just get stranger. There is a national monument in Wyoming known as Devil's Tower. Now, this is a rock, a very old rock, and it is the only one of its massive size in the area, surrounded by trees. At first glance, this looks like a mountain or just a large mass of rock left behind after erosion. Now, this wouldn't seem strange except for that this rock has a shape that is eerily similar to that of a tree stump. And if you think that's crazy, there are many more of these around the world. So the only question that remains, if a structure like this is an ancient tree stump, then who the hell cut it down? Now, I would say since the last world war, we've been living in an age of revelation. What I mean is, the knowledge about the true world we live in is coming to light. Most of us would agree that the world millions of years ago, maybe even only thousands of years ago, was a very, very different place. And in order for this to make sense, we're going to have to go back pre-flood. Think about this. How bad of a place does the earth have to be in order for God to say, Nope, that's it. I'm wiping everything out and starting over from scratch. I mean, what did the angels and men do to this place? And their children, by God, the Nephilim? What do you think they did to this place while they were here? I can only assume that they terraformed our planet into a total wasteland. Now, I'm going to take you through some basic things so that I can build a case for what I'm about to present. First, what is soil? The Earth's soil is made up of unconsolidated minerals and organic matter mixed with water and gases, compost. It is the layer of skin on the Earth in which vegetation can grow. Are you with me so far? Don't worry, this will all make sense in a moment. Next, we have rock or stone. Now, there are three basic types of rock, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Igneous rock is formed by the cooling of magma either within the earth or on the surface as volcanic rock. This can be formed from several minerals and makes up a great deal of the earth's crust. Sedimentary rock is basically settled minerals deposited as bedding after weathering and erosion. This is normally found in layers. And metamorphic rock is pre-existing rock that has been heated up in compressed, giving the rock new characteristics specific to certain minerals once it cools. Now that is rock basics, which brings us to sand, which is not soil, but granules of rock that have been broken down by the elements, becoming what we know as the deserts, riverbeds, and beaches of the world. So let's look at our deserts, and here's a question you probably never thought of before. Are all the deserts of the earth the product of nature? In other words, we know that these tiny grains of sand in the desert come from small rocks and finally larger rocks. But there seems to be more sand than large rocks, which gives the impression that the desert sand was not left behind by the elements or eroded rock, but dumped there. Now, when I say dumped, I mean that the desert sand is the result of a rapid breakdown. If you look at a geographical map of the world and took all of the continents and pieced them together as one mass of land, then you can see that the major deserts of the world line up to form one large massive desert. Where did this desert come from? Well, let's say that before it was a desert, it was lush green land that was hit by a meteor. And this meteor cracked the land mass into several continents, forming a crater filled with water that we know to be the Gulf of Mexico. 
The surrounding desert is nothing more than the aftermath of a great explosion from the meteor impacting Earth. This is one possibility, but it can't account for every desert in the world. So, another possibility is that this desert sand was physically dumped by ancient beings. What beings? We don't know, but I'm sure you can guess. You see, a quarry is an open pit or site where minerals, rock, stone, sand, gravel have been excavated or mined using heavy machinery. They are man-made. But what makes them significant is that the quarry walls have a strong resemblance to the mountain ranges and canyons on our planet. What if I told you that the Grand Canyon is not a natural land formation, but that it was dug out? It's just a long hole that was left after massive mining. Now, keep in mind that when you dig a hole, you have to put the dirt somewhere. Could it be that something like a volcano is nothing more than a large burning landfill? Or maybe deserts are nothing more than the dumping ground for quarry waste. Now, the reason I bring all of these things up, the soil, the rocks, the deserts, quarries, is to begin to paint a picture and show that the earth we live in is a deliberately terraformed, gigantic desert wasteland compared to when it started out. And also, that all the soil, compost, and desert sand around the world may be in great part the remains or debris of ancient giant trees. So now that we got all the science crap out the way, let's get into the good stuff. Now here's the theory, plain and simple. Around our planet there are hundreds of land masses known as mesas. This is an isolated hill with a flat top and very steep sides. And some believe that these mesas are actually ancient giant tree stumps. Why do they believe this? Because they look like giant tree stumps. Now, that's not too hard to believe given the size of the sequoias in California. One in particular, General Sherman, over 2,700 years old with a 25-foot base and 275-foot height. It is one of the oldest living trees in the world. So, even if the oldest tree in the world is over 5,000 years old, then what happened to the older trees? These mesas look like the remains of trees that have been cut down, not to mention the mountains, which look like trees that have been broken off at their base. Now, if you look at something like Devil's Tower, we're talking about a tree that would have been over 19,000 feet tall, and the circumference of its base is a little over a mile long. So, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If a giant or alien cut this tree down, what do they do with it? Where are the remains of the machinery or tools it took to cut such a massive tree down? And where's the rest of the tree? What do they use it for? Well, some believe that these gigantic trees were cut down, mined, and burned. So, the remains of those tree trunks and branches make up the rocks and stones we see today. And perhaps, the ice caps. Imagine what type of world it must have been when these trees were still alive. I mean, these mountains and mesas do look as if they were grown instead of molded over time. Take a look at the geometrical patterns formed in these rocks, the hexagon. These hexagonal patterns occur in nature and are found all over our planet as the cross-section fibers of these ancient stumps that are everywhere. Giant's Causeway in Ireland. Is this structure carved by the elements or grown by the earth? What about the salt flats of Bolivia? Now I'm not saying that this is the top of a giant tree stump, but again we have this geometric pattern throughout the flats as if someone had laid down tile. Look at Bell Rock in Arizona. Look at how these rocks line up as do the trees in the forest. Russia Ethiopia, Venezuela, Canada, Italy, Argentina, Australia, Cape Town, Africa, the U.S. It's not hard to find these tree stumps hidden in plain sight, folks. 
once you realize that this theory could be a possible reality. Folks, this is a true mystery that I don't know if I want to keep digging into, but I will. So, consider this an introduction into a new area of research, and get excited as this newfound knowledge brings us just a bit closer to the truth. <laughs>